I administered a MISQ analysis procedure with my student, who I will refer to by her initials MM. She is a sweet, outgoing kindergartner in my class at Davidson Elementary in the North Kansas City Schools. She is very bright and currently reading above grade level. Based on my observations and her answers to questions on the Burke reading interview, MM has a word-based view of reading and relies heavily on decoding strategies that I have taught throughout the year. She comprehends text well overall, but often miscues without regard to meaning. In this video, you will hear M.M. read aloud a story called Billy Gets Lost and retell the story to me. I will share my ideas for strengths and needs as well as recommendations for further instruction. You will also hear clips of M.M. and I using retrospective miscue analysis as she listens to her own reading of Billy Gets Lost and we discuss some of her miscue patterns. All right, I want you to read this book out loud to me and if you come to something you don't know, do whatever you would do if you were reading by yourself because I won't be able to help you. Okay, just read it like during reading time you're reading by yourself. Okay? All right, go ahead. Billy gets lost. Billy is my puppy. He lives in a big house with a blue roof. He loves to play Fetch with Emmy. Emmy throws the ball. Billy catch it. Then Billy sees cat here. Robs the ball and <coughs> chase cat. Cat runs down the <coughs> street and Billy chase him. Ellie can you sippy frog? Comes back, Billy Cat runs. Skippy Frog. Wait, yeah. A farm and Billy chase him. Cat runs into the forest and Billy chases him. Cat climbs up the tree. Billy turns to go time to go home. He could not see the big house with a blue roof. Oh, no, I am lost, Billy says. Billy run, runs down a path. He sees fox. How can you, how can I get home? He asked fox. I have never been out of the forest, says Fox, axe cow in the Kippy Frog. Failed fox say Billy runs to the farms field.
Billy said, says to Cal, I am lost. Do you know the way to my house? Billy asked. I have never been off the farm, say, says Cal. Ask Owl. Cal says. Billy gets to Owl. The brown place woke up Al says Billy I need your help he says I am lost. He cries. Do you know a wait? Do you know a big house with a blue roof? Billy asks. Yes, I do. Al says. Al finds and Billy chases here. Then Billy sees Emmy at the big house with a blue roof. Thank you, Al, says Billy. All right, good job. All right, tell me what you remember from this story. Tell me what happened. Billy and Emma were playing that. Mm -hmm. And then Billy got lost in the forest, and then it was all types of different animals trying to help him um, get back home, but then the new and Sep the owl, and then the end, they all, um, Billy got back home. Anything else you remember? No. How did Billy get lost in the forest? He was playing catch with Emmy, and then a cat was chasing after, and then he went ran into the forest chasing after the cat, and he got lost in the forest. Mm -hmm. And he said all types of animals tried to help him? Yeah. Who helped him first? Mm, the fox. Mm-hmm. And then the cow. And then the owl. And how did Billy get home? The owl knew where his house was, and so he followed the owl to his house. Mm -hmm. How do you think the owl knew where his house was? He has good eyesight. He has good eyesight? Mm-hmm. Can you tell me the setting of this story? Where did this story take place? Mm -hmm. At Billy's house. Where does Billy live? Uh, hmm. Like what? Like. Do you remember where he lives? Billy? Mm -mm. Where else did Billy go besides his house? The farm. The farm? Mm -hmm. And then the forest. Mm hmm. Anywhere else? Mm. Mm hmm. I don't think so. Okay. What would you say the, if you had to tell me this story in one sentence, what would you say the main idea of this story was? What was like the, the main idea, the most important thing?
like what was most about the story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That Billy got lost. Uh-huh. Anything mm-hmm. else? Uh-huh. What happened after he got lost? Uh, animals was helping him. Yeah, awesome. M.M.'s reading of Billy Gets Lost presented several of her literacy strengths. She made miscues that didn't change the meaning of the text 38% of the time, and 87% of her miscues had high or some graphic similarity to the text, which indicates she's very aware of sound symbol relationships. Her miscues with no graphic similarity were often self-corrected or did not change the meaning of the text. She was able to comprehend 82% of the story after the reading and maintain the author's intended meaning 62% of the time. She made her reading sound like language 68% of the time. She was able to recall the characters and setting from the story. She recalled 70% of the events of the story in the correct order and was able to tell the main idea of the story in just a couple of sentences. Her reading also presented several areas of need. She only self-corrected 12% of the time, which does not seem to show that she is self-monitoring throughout the text. 50% of her miscues were uncorrected and changed the meaning or partially changed the meaning of the text. She does not stop when meaning's lost and is not focused on making sense of the text. She recognizes the importance of using decoding strategies, as indicated by her answers in the Burke reading interview, but did not apply them correctly, if at all, during the reading. She skips words and does not come back to figure them out. She attempted our class's Skippy Frog strategy, where you're supposed to skip a word, read to the end of the sentence, and using context clues, go back to figure out the word, but did not use it correctly. She accepts non-words regardless of their lack of meaning in the text. 30% of her miscues that had high graphic similarity also changed the meaning of the text, which shows that she is more focused on the graphic cues than on making meaning. She uses graphic information from the beginning and end of the word, but rarely uses information from the middle or the vowel sound of the word. She read with several very long pauses that range from 22 to 37 seconds that interrupted the comprehension. Based on the information gathered from this miscue analysis procedure, I have put together a list of recommendations for possible instructional strategies to use with MM. Number one, teach her to self-monitor and self-correct when reading does not make sense using the click or clunk strategy from the Intervention Central website. This strategy asks you to stop periodically to check for understanding of sentences, paragraphs, or pages. Number two, teach MM more about all of the cueing system so that she can focus more on the syntax and semantics rather than always on the graphic cues. Teach her to ask, does it look right, sound right, and make sense? Number three, Help to increase comprehension and recall of events by using the text look-back strategy from Intervention Central and using a graphic organizer like one from Florida Center for Reading Research to summarize the events. Number four, remind her of all of the Beanie Baby decoding strategies and how to use them and when. Focus on the trying line strategy, trying a word that would make sense, before using other strategies that would focus on the graphic cues only. Number five, Specifically focus on the Skippy Frog strategy, as she attempted to use it several times when reading, but not correctly. Show her to use the strategy to read on and use the context of the sentence to figure out the unknown word. Number six, use the independent reading time during Reader's Workshop to allow M.M. to read independently and have her choice of texts. Number seven, talk to M.M. about her use of non-words while reading and try the real versus nonsense word sorting strategy. Number eight, teach her to attend more to medial vowel sounds by using the variant correspondence strategies from the Florida Center for Reading Research and vowel word sorts from the Intervention Center website. Number nine, encourage her to read with fluency without long pauses that interrupt her comprehension. Try using fluency phrases or choral reading strategies with a teacher or peer. Number 10, Teach M.M. to engage in retrospective miscue analysis. Because of her many uncorrected miscues, she would benefit from learning to be more aware and metacognitive when reading. You will now hear clips from an RMA session with M.M. based on her reading of Billy Gets Lost. Okay, so we're going to look back at this book that you read, and I'm going to play for you the recording that we made 
of you reading it. So you're going to actually hear yourself reading it, okay? And I want you to be listening because when you were reading, remember I was marking on the paper what you said? And so <clears throat> we call those miscues. Like if you read something, maybe you say a different word that's in the book, right? Or maybe you skipped a word or maybe you repeated it more than once. I write that down. And those are called miscues. So that tells me what you read. So we're going to listen to your reading that you did. And we're just going to look at some of the... I want you to think about if you hear something that... If we're reading it and what you said is different from when the, what the book says, a miscue, we're going to talk about it. Okay? You said here instead of he. You said here drops the ball and chase cat. So would that sound like... What we how we would talk? Mm -hmm. If we said here drops the ball. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. So that's another time when we want to go back and listen again and think, hmm, that didn't make any sense. I better go back and see if I can fix that. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you also hear that there was a really long pause, like you stopped for a long time before you said this word? Why do you think you did that? What were you doing when it was like quiet for that long time? What were you doing during that time? Trying to figure out the words. What were you doing to figure it out? Mm -hmm. I was using the pictures and trying to sound it out. So you're using the picture and trying to sound it out? So that's why it was quiet for that long time, right? You heard that part where it was really quiet, you were pausing. So you were doing all that thinking inside of your head, weren't you? You were using the picture, you were trying to sound it out, and then you tried the word and then you kept reading, right? That's good. Okay, so this page, those are all those smart things that you did. You said, cat climbs up the tree, and that still makes sense, doesn't it? So even though it says A, it still makes sense. So that's an okay miscue to make because the book still makes sense to you, right? And then here you said, Billy turns to go and then you decided to change it to Billy, time to go home. And you did that because that made more sense to you, right? That sounded better. Does it still make sense? The story still sounds right, doesn't it? And then here you did it again. It says in the book, it says he cannot see the big house with a blue roof. And did you hear what you said? He. Do you, remember? you said could not. So the book says cannot, and you said could not. So let's read it both ways and see if both ways make sense. He, he cannot see the big house with a blue roof. Does that make sense? He cannot see the big house with a blue roof. Yep. Okay, now read it the other way you said it. He could not. He could not see the big house with a blue roof. Does that make sense? So they both make sense, don't they? So either way you read it. So even though you didn't read exactly the way the book has it, it still made sense, so it worked, right? And you didn't have to worry about, now I'm not understanding the book because you still were able to use words that made sense, right? Let's listen to this next page because you corrected yourself a lot on this page, which is what smart readers do. Did you hear all those corrections that you made? So you made one here in this first sentence. You said, Billy, run, and then you realized that's not that word. What is it? Runs. Runs. So you self-corrected. So if you read, Billy run down a path, that probably wouldn't have made sense, would it? So you were thinking in your head about, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't sound like how we talk, so I'm going to fix it. Billy runs down a path. He sees fox. What self-correction did you make down here? How can I, but I said... You said, how can you... Yeah. And then you self-corrected, right? You went all the way back to the beginning of that sentence and you tried it again. How can I get home? So you self-corrected on both of those parts on that page. And that means that you were thinking about, does this make sense? Is this what it's supposed to sound like? And you probably looked at that word and you know the word you, right? If you saw the word you, you would know it. And you looked at that word and you said, that doesn't look like the word you. That doesn't look right. So you went back and you fixed it. And you used that self-correcting, right? And that helped you to understand it better probably, didn't it?